I was going to say good morning, but it's, it's not morning time. It's good afternoon. It, it kind of feels like morning, don't it? Okay, y'all ready for some exercise? <laughs> Let's get up and just run a little bit first and just do some of this and we'll do some of this, you know. And, uh, matter of fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get somebody come up here and play some good old fashioned, fast Christian music. We get up here and dance. To get warm, we can dance for the Lord too. You know, yeah, all right, listen. When it, sometimes we, we have to, we want to wait for the Holy Spirit to move us. It doesn't really say that in God's Word, does it? It said, serve God with gladness. Now, how many times we're glad? <laughs> Sometimes we're not. But, you know, we can still serve God with gladness. And uh, you know, a day like today, it's not the warmest day. It's actually, to me, one of the most, uh, one of the it's a fall day. It's actually a cool and dang day, so it's fall weather. And so we need to be thankful for this day that God's given us no matter what. Because he said, in all things, give thanks. Now, let me ask you one question. I got this. It's got the Holy Bible. I feel like I might be preaching to the choir. <laughs> so, you know how it is. It's, you know, we preach to the choir sometimes, don't we, Brother Roger? But that's okay. I, I don't care how long we've been serving God. We're not ever too old or too smart to learn things from God's Word. And I found this out. That the, more I, the more I study, the more I'm involved in God's Word, I find out I need to know more about my Lord. It says the Holy Bible. Now, I believe every here, every part of this Bible is God's Word spoken to us. Amen? Do y'all feel, how many feel the same way? Let's give the Lord a hand for His Word. Amen? Thank Him for His Word. Now, this right here is a road map that leads to heaven. Now, we don't have to have no more road maps because we got these here. One of these, GPS, you know. Our ways, we put it up there, it tells us how to get somewhere. We follow that little lady who says, go this way, go that way. You come make a right turn. We, we listen to her and follow her ways. But I'm going to tell you something. We have to start, as God's people, we must start listening to God's Word. We're going to have to listen to God's Word. Now, listen, this is a precious book. It's a road map that leads to heaven. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to say this for myself. I want to go to heaven. I want to go there. And I, I, I'm public about it. I don't care what people say. I want to go to heaven. Now, I don't listen to Hollywood because Hollywood tells you that everybody's going to heaven. Now, I, I've seen some, they'll say somebody died and, and they're up there, you know, playing their honky-tonk music before the Lord. I think, to be honest to you, I'm not the one who makes the decision where they go. But if they don't follow this road map, they're not where God is. And I don't want to go there. I'm like, a, I'm like Apostle Paul. He, he said this, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Now, I want to give a testimony. When I was younger, my mom and dad raised me right. They were honest people. My dad was a, he was a coal miner, but he didn't work in the coal mines. He worked at the temple for years. And, and so my, my mom was, uh, she's always there for us. And she taught us that we were taught right. My mom, my mom taught us things like this. Uh, if you're going to say anything about anybody, make sure it's good. Don't say anything bad about anybody. And my mom always taught us to treat people the way we want to be treated ourselves. So I had some good upbringing. But I didn't go that way. You know, I got a, my teenage years, I, I'm like a lot of young people, I thought that I knew everything. And, and sometimes young people think they know everything. But I got involved in, back in the 60s in, the, you know, drugs and rock and roll and sex. And I, I didn't go my mom and dad's way, I went my own way. And uh, when I went that way, it was a lot of fun starting off, but it didn't take too long for the fun to run out. Because what happens is, this is the, the devices of, the, of Satan. He wants you to have pleasure on his area, but you're going to pay a price for that pleasure. Now, I got, I got holes in my throat. 
where I almost died because of my drug addictions. I got holes in my side where my lungs collapsed because of drug addictions. And I got scars all through me because of the, of the life I lived. A matter of fact, uh, as a young man, I sat in front of my bedroom more than once with a shotgun pointed to my head, trying to reach that trigger, pull that trigger. Because, see, I thought one time in my life the world would be better off if I wasn't in it. And I'm sure that all of you may have crossed that path. I did. But I had a, I had a mother, a little bit of feedback, I had a mother that prayed for me and, and, and called, on my, called my name before the Lord. Now, I want to tell you the bad thing about living a sinful life that I didn't have no idea, absolutely, because I didn't know anything about God's Word. Be careful little feet where you go because there's going to be a little set of feet behind you who will follow your ways. And I had a little boy, and I, I, I loved that child. And, and I was the type of parent would say, Son, I want you to do what I say, but don't you do what I do. Now, come on, some of the people here are live, have lived that way or know people living that way. I, I don't want you to do what I'm doing, but you do what I say. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. Them children are going to follow your ways. And that son followed my ways. And, uh, and it absolutely tore me to pieces because uh, I didn't want my child to turn out the way I was, but he did. The only reason why I'm here today as a minister of God because I had praying parents and God had a purpose for me. And, and that purpose was to share His love and His gospel to other people. This morning, I want to let you know here, I don't care uh, about who you are, where you're from, how you was raised, I'm going to tell you one thing. God loves you. And I'm here not because I get paid to come here. It's kind of a cool morning. I'm here because I love you. I love you enough to tell you that we all must repent. We all must turn from our sins and our ways and turn to God. There has to be a turnaround in your life, folks. And if, if there's no turnaround, then how can you say that I love God? Because Jesus said it plainly. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And don't do the things I tell you. So the turnaround is this. I had it my way when I was younger and done my own thing. But I realized how wrong I was. And I turned around and I turned to God and I said, Lord, let's have it your way from now on. Let's have it your way. God tried it my way. And my way didn't lead no words but a lot of misery and a lot of scars and a lot of hurt. And because of my lifestyle and the way I lived, I end up seeing my child go that way. And that way took him out of this world way too early. My son left this world at 30 years old because he followed daddy's footsteps. Now, let me tell you something now. You can lose a lot of things in life, but when you lose a child, and the main reason you lost that child is they follow your footstep, it's hard to come over that. It's hard to get that out of your system. It's hard to realize that your child right now is buried up in a cemetery in Bluefield because he followed daddy's footsteps. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you and warn you, please don't go the way of the world, and please don't go the way of your flesh because it'll lead to destruction. It may not destroy you, but destroy the ones behind you. And I'm, a, I'm the one living example from that. How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? We must follow His example. If you go and follow anybody, follow the ways of the Lord. And you can't follow the ways of the Lord unless you get in here and find out about Jesus. If you want to find out about him, if you want to get down and find out about how his life is and what he's done, open the New Testament to the Gospel of Matthew and start reading and start studying. My encouragement to you, 
would go over to go over the New Testament at least a dozen times before you go back to the New Testament. Because see, I must follow the ways of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And the first four books of the New Testament is called the Gospel of what? Jesus Christ. And the last book of the New Testament is a revelation of Jesus Christ. See, he's the one that saves us by his grace through faith in him. And he's the one that keeps us by his grace day in and day out. And he's the one that's going to take us to that place called heaven by his grace. And I don't know about you, I'm getting anxious sometimes to go there. But the only way you'll ever get there is to follow his ways. Let me read to you just a few scriptures out of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus Christ lived as a, a normal person like we did. He worked. His, his dad was a carpenter. He was a carpenter's son. Now, if he walked here, uh, he may have been a coal miner's son. If he lived back to these days and God said him come at this time, he may have been a coal miner's son. We may have knew him as Jesus the coal miner's son. The people back in Jerusalem and that surrounding area where he lived at, all he was was Jesus the carpenter's son. And he uh, lived under the directions and guidance of his mom and dad for 30 years. 30 years he lived as a carpenter's assistant. Now, I've, I've been a carpenter some, and that's not easy work being a carpenter. So we know right off the bat that Jesus Christ was probably a strong man. But 30 years, after his 30 years of life, God changed. It was time for him to be revealed who he really is and who he really was. It says in this, Matthew chapter 3, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I encourage every preacher, here it's in here, in this town, this whole area, every once in a while you need to stop your preaching and say, Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you don't turn, if you go your own way, if you live the way you want to, your way is going to lead you to a place you do not want to go. And you're going to face something the Bible calls a second death. And that second death, the Bible said, now, listen, I, I, I'm all, everybody's going to die the first death. We're going to all go by the grave if the Lord don't come back. He's not talking about the physical death. He's talking about the second death. The Bible calls the second death the lake of fire. And if we don't repent and turn to the Lord and let him come into our life, then our, our, our pathway is going to lead right to a lake of fire. And I know you, brothers and sisters and neighbors and friends, you do not want to go to that place of the second death. And I'm going to tell you some good news. It's not God's will to any man or any woman that would perish and go that way. It's God's will to all be converted. And we're going to talk about the conversion this morning or this afternoon, about what it's like to be converted. And I want to share with you a little bit of insight of what Jesus did because He's the one we need to follow, his footsteps. John was, 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 was preaching down by the Jordan River. And he was telling people, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. You know what, Brother Roger, that's what preachers are for. We're supposed to tell people, Prepare the way of the Lord. It's up to me to tell men and women to repent, to turn from your sinful ways, to turn from your own lifestyle, and turn to Jesus Christ. Prepare your hearts. See, I, I told you already, I lived the way I wanted to live as a young man. I got involved in the, the world. I got involved in the, the drugs and the music and the sex. I got involved in all that. And all I'd done was it was, led me down to a place that, oh, you know, it was a lot of fun starting off. It really was. But I'm going to tell you what, this is what fun the world has to offer. When you first do something in this world, and I'm, I'm going to share some of my own testimony, it's a lot of fun doing it. If you go out there and you drink and party some, sometimes you just think this is a whole lot of fun. You go out there and you find you some nice pretty lady and and go out and take her out and end up in a motel with her. 
And you say, well, this is a lot of fun. You know? But you know, I want to tell you something about the, the fun that you can have out in this world. There's going to come a time that it's not going to be any fun no more. The alcohol will get you. The drugs will get you. You can't break these addictions off your life. The immoral life will lead you further and further and further and further away from God. To bring you to the place that you don't want to think about God no more. And if you read in the book of Romans, when you get to that place you don't want to think about God anymore, then God can turn you over to a reprobate mind. And when your mind becomes reprobate, you know what happens to a man and woman's minds reprobate? They start having affections for their own sex. Men start lusting after men, and women start lusting after women. A man, a, a man won't turn to his natural affections, and a woman won't turn to her natural affections. A woman for a man or a man for a woman a woman will start lusting after another woman. And a man will start lusting after another man. And you know the reason why? Because they don't want to retain God in their thinking. And God turns them over to a reprobate mind. Their mind comes reprobate. And you'll start doing it. And you can see in society right now, what we have in this world, we have a lot of stuff going on that's not right. You know, it's, we have a lot of people. And I don't understand it. I... You know, I, I couldn't go to a homosexual wedding. I couldn't see a man kissing another man after having their vows to each other. Because let me tell you something, even though that I would pray for them, it, it would be repulsive to me, but, and I'd almost want to throw up. It made me sick in my stomach to see a man kissing on another man. It made me sick in my stomach to see a woman kissing on another woman. Because why? Because I'm a natural person and God gave me a, a, a real insight and it really is re it's repulsive to Him and it makes it repulsive to me. Even before I got saved, I couldn't understand that. So that's what happens to a person. I started off drinking, I can remember back in 1960, 68, or no, 69, a buddy of mine, my drinking buddy, and uh, a guy in Bluefield, Mangus man. I don't know if y'all remember any Mangus in Bluefield, but he was selling some some pot, some marijuana. That was something we never did, never did really hear about too much before I was at. And uh, my buddy said, "Randy, you want to try a little bit?" I said, "Man, I don't know if I want to try any of that stuff or not." But you know how you guys are drinking and carrying on. Next thing I know. I was trying a little bit of pot. And what happens to pot and alcohol, it goes from one thing to a next, to a next, to a next, and to a next. And I got addicted to amphetamines. Y'all know what amphetamines are? That's up, up. I didn't get addicted to barbiturates. And I didn't like needles at all, but I got addicted to amphetamines. And I don't know how many times I would take so many amphetamines that my heart would race so hard and hurt my chest so bad I didn't think I was going to make it. And you know what I would do back in my younger days when I got that position? I'd say, oh God, have mercy on me. Please help me because I thought I was going to die. You know, one thing about when I grew up as a young man and a teenage boy and a, and younger, a, teen, a young man, I was afraid to die. I, I was totally frightened to die. And when I do so many drugs, Sister Beverly, and I thought I was going to die, I said, oh, God, please help me. I cry out to God. This one I, I, I tell, oh, God, get me out of this, and I'll quit doing it. I won't do it no more. And you know what I did? As soon as he got me out of it, I was right back in it. Why? Because I was addicted you can't break addictions yourself. Why couldn't I put that beer can down? Or I, I kept a, a liquor bottle under my seat when I get off from work. First thing I do, get me a Coca-Cola and have me a couple of swigs of liquor from Coca-Cola. Why couldn't I put that away? 
Why couldn't I just drop that? Because it was killing me. I was too far down the road, and it was destroying my life. Why couldn't I just say, I stop this? I'll tell you why, because I was addicted. And see, the devil knows if you let, he'll let you have a good time starting off to get you addicted. Because when you're addicted, you can't lay your stuff down. What kind, why couldn't I rock, walk away from an immoral life when I was wanting to be a normal man? Because I was addicted. I was addicted. And for a long period of time in my life in that addiction, I mean, everybody, the people loved me and cared about me. And if you have people in your family you love and care about, and if you tell them, hey, you need to change, don't stop telling them that. Because you love them enough to tell them, hey, listen, you need to change. And my family would tell me, Randy, you need to change. But I was so addicted, so stubborn, I'd say, no, I don't need to change. I'm not hurting nobody but myself. And that's, a, that's one of the biggest lies the devil can put on a person's life. Your life, besides hurting you, it hurts your family. It hurts all the people you know you. It hurts your community. It hurts your schools. It hurts this town here. It destroys everything. And I'd say, no, I'm not hurting nobody but myself. I don't know about you, but it's getting warmer right now. I believe God's wanting to speak to all of us, let us know, listen, the devil's got a trap for you. Don't you go that way. And so John went ahead of Jesus Christ. And this was his one message for two years. Repent. Repent. You know, I, I, sometimes I go to church and won't hear somebody say, Repent. But it's like it's become a lost, a lost cause anymore. But listen, as long as Jesus Christ and as long as this world exists, somebody's going to go say repent. Because God loves the people enough to know if they don't repent and turn to me, they're not going to make it to heaven. This is what John said again. Repent. Now this is, this is John the Baptist. Now John himself was clothed in camel hair a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan went out to him and were baptized in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, we're not here at the Jordan River, but folks, I just got through confessing my sins to you. And that's what they were doing at the Jordan River. They were confessing their sins. What, in other words, they were saying, I'm a drunk, and I don't want to be a drunk no more. And one was saying, I'm a drug addict, and I don't want to be a drug addict no more. One says, I'm stuck in an immoral lifestyle, and I don't want to live that way no more. They were, they were actually confessing their sins down at the Jordan River. They were doing the same thing I just did to you right here. It said, they were saying, they were, they were repenting, they were, they were being baptized by him in Jordan Wisdom, confessing their sins. Now, let's go, I'm going to skip on down to verse number 11. This is what God's Word says. This is John the Baptist talking. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That was a baptism of repentance. I baptize you with water unto repentance. But listen what John said. But he who comes, he who is coming after me is mightier than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and far. He's the one. You know, uh, we're just human beings like everybody else. We're just preachers. But there's one coming after us, folks. <laughs> I'm not even worthy to carry his shoes. But boy, he's going to do something for you that none of else can. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And he's going to place a fire in you. And that fire has many purposes. One, that fire will burn the, all the impurities out of your heart and soul. That fire from heaven will cleanse your heart and cleanse your soul. See, I, I, I was stuck in this old lifestyle, addictions. 
But when Jesus come and baptized me in the Holy Ghost, that fire consumed all him, all his all addictions. The alcohol just got burnt up inside of me. And I quit thirsting for alcohol. The fire burned that, that drug addiction inside of me. It burned it up. And I wasn't desiring for drugs no more. And that fire from heaven burned all that immoral lifestyle in me. And I didn't want to live an immoral lifestyle no more. And you know what Jesus said? He said this, And whom he says free is free indeed. And thank God Almighty, he set me free. He set me free from the drugs, the alcohol, and all the immoral lifestyle I live. And he put me on another path. And that path leads to where I want to go. And that path, as long as I follow him, will lead me to that wonderful place called heaven. Verse number 13 says, And then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. First thing, you need to repent. Listen, you need to turn from your ways and turn to God. Repentance means of this, have a change of heart, a change of mind, and a change of direction. You need to realize that you're wrong and he's right. And you realize that you turn right there. You turn from your ways and you turn to him. That's what repentance is all about. Turn from your ways and turn to God. And if you'll do that, the second thing he's done, Jesus went down to the Jordan River and says, and then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. Now listen, I'm a full gospel believer, but I'm going to tell you something right now. You need to be baptized down at the river or down, they don't do it no more publicly. It's always inside the church. Years ago, we had to go down to the river or down to the lake somewhere in front of everybody to let everybody know that I'm not ashamed of this wonderful gospel and I'm going to be submerged in water as, as Jesus Christ was because I made the decision. I'm going to quit following Randy's ways and I'm going to follow his ways. If Jesus was baptized by water, by George, I'm going to be baptized by water. And this is what it says. And John tried to prevent Jesus, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Now I'm going to tell you what water baptism is by that one scripture. It's the right thing to do and fulfills all of God's righteousness. Now, if you want to please God, you do what he says. If he said for you to be baptized, my friends, I just got through filling the baptistry up down here at the Church of God, down here at the old Lowe's building. I just got through getting it full this morning and turned the heaters on. If you want to be baptized, be at church down there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'll baptize you. The water's ready. It's not like the way we was. We got into the old cold, we got into the old cold creeks. I was baptized, uh, y'all may not know where it says, I was baptized at, at Big Creek, a little mountain stream come out in October. It was cold enough that the water stood still and froze. And I was baptized at that little creek. Down here, if you come down tomorrow be baptized, the water's about 80 degrees, nice and warm. But Jesus said this, it's for, it's, it's, it, for Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. He was baptized by John to Jordan River. John didn't want to do that. And I can imagine how John felt about that. If Jesus, if I was doing something and Jesus said, Randy, I want you to do this for me, I'd say, why me, Lord? Why don't you do it to me? I don't, I'm not worthy for me to do it for you. That's what John must have felt that way. Because he knew who he was. One, by, one, one part of the gospel says when Jesus come walking down to the Jordan, John saw him, the Holy Ghost spoke through John the Baptist and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How did John know that? John didn't know that. God knew that. God was speaking through John about his son. Now listen to what happened. And when he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. You know what baptism? You submerged in water. He come up out of water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. 
That was like when we was out here and we baptized somebody by water and we brought them up out of water to heaven, the, the clouds would open up. Now, that, that would get your attention right off the bat right there to see the heavens open up. And the Bible says a dove came out of the heavens and come down and landed up on top of Jesus Christ. Listen to what it said. And, uh, and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting up on him. That was the Holy Ghost coming down from heaven in the form of a dove and landed upon Jesus Christ. And then this is what happened. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved.